Hi again, everyone. This video is sponsored by Contribution from Anonymous, and here's her story. Dear Ali, I'm finally getting around to sending you the letter to go with the donation a couple weeks back. Let's just call me Anonymous. My story can be very long, so I'm going to give you broad strokes as you can fill in the blanks. You played a phone call from the mother of Megan that stopped me in my tracks while working around the house. Megan was adopted, and that video, I believe, is um, the narcissist sees you as a pet that ran away. And that's under narcissist record, one of the narcissist recordings. Megan was adopted, became the scapegoat of her adopted family, ran away for sanity, and her mother was on the phone blaming it all on Megan. The phone call Egan ended with Megan in tears. I was adopted at birth. The same parents had adopted a boy almost two years earlier. He was the golden child, and my father was a miserable narcissist. But luckily, he traveled for business all week. From what I can remember, I hated him as a young girl, and I knew he hated me too. When I was just seven years old, my mother went down to his office in the basement and committed suicide with his gun that was locked in a safe. I never believed that she killed herself, and neither did her side of the family. Speaking of which, from that day forward, my brother and I were not allowed to see her side of the family. Not my grandmother or uncle or cousins that we had grown up with, just cut off permanently. My memories of that time are almost non-existent. All you talk about triggers that take you back to when you were five years old. I don't have any memories, really, except the day my mother died. The old bastard hired a housekeeper to look after us while he traveled, but eventually my brother and I were shipped off to boarding school. Big mistake. I found myself in an Earl of Girls Catholic boarding school that was a picnic compared to living at home. This was an equestrian school in the middle of a horse in the middle of horse country in Virginia. All I have ever wanted was a horse, and so naturally, at an equestrian school, the old bastard refuses to sign the permission slip for me to ride. I told my friends that I could never tell the old bastard what my dreams were because he would move heaven and earth to make sure they never came true. I sneaked out one night and rode away with them until I was caught and thrown out of school. The old bastard had retired and was home full time. I started working at 15, met a guy at 16, at 16 and left home, never to return. I never got pregnant, never went to jail, found my calling in a full-time job in broadcasting and have been doing it ever since. But I did try to go back and have a but I did try to go back and have a talk like Megan did. It was all over Christmas vacation and that my narcissist boyfriend and I were traveling to see him, but got stranded in Chicago without our bags. I begged the boyfriend to let me carry my makeup bag, but he insisted that his photography equipment was more valuable. So after 18 hours in the Chicago airport, and eight years since I had seen the old bastard face to face, the first thing he says to me is, I thought you said your face had cleared up. And instinctively, I'm pissed at the boyfriend who wouldn't let me bring my makeup instead of cussing out the asshole who just insulted me again. And <clears throat> I'm going to be fair here to the boyfriend. I would make that same call. I would not check in expensive camera equipment for for Charlene's makeup. That just doesn't make any like that doesn't make any sense. I I can't fault him for that. You know, I, I, I can't. I mean, that's just, if you know the airlines and how shit gets lost and stolen and they're abusive anyway. But I can't fault the boyfriend with that. And you're right. You're pissed at the boyfriend instead of cuss, cursing out your father who just insulted you after eight years. The trip, the trip was a disaster. There was no closure. And he died a few years later. I felt nothing. My brother died four years ago from a deadly mix of alcohol and drugs. I was upset at first, but now I feel nothing. Turns out the boyfriend of eight years was a narcissist too. I left him and moved to Los Angeles where I fell in love and married a narcissist. That lasted six years total, but only two for the marriage. The end of that was so devastating. I stayed single for almost 10 years until I met a person online who would eventually lead me to the pieces, to put the pieces together. He is well, he is a well-known owner of horses in Santa Anita. He took, he took me for one hell of a ride, but I kept moving away from him in our relationship. 
He tried to push my boundaries over and over, and I finally sent him an email written in the heat of the moment, laying out his actions that were abusive. I had kidney stone surgery weeks later, and he used that to creep back in. Oof, that's painful. I had kidney stone surgery, too. Oof. Ooh, is that horrible. Especially for a guy. Oof. Because it's not actually surgery. They go in with a clamp and rip it out. We had planned on meeting at a race in Del Mar, and we did. I saw him for one hour, and he couldn't stop adoring me. We were supposed to see each other that night and at various times over the weekend. We never did. He had waited six months for the perfect time to punish me by discard, by discard because of that email I had sent. His hoovering never stops. I am no contact with him. MPD free in 2017. Advice for Megan is to run away from that bitch of a mother. She cannot further her growth in life and will just sink her. Detach and become independent. Ollie, my two biggest issues are thoughts and feelings. I'm a master at blocking blocking out things that happened and I don't that I don't care to remember. I can't remember much of what happened during my marriage and inside I feel dead. I get absolute joy from, from my herd of horses that I, that I have now turned into a 501c3 rescue. But I am more dead than what that means. It's a tax, it's a tax free, um, it's a tax free organization because it's a charity. But I am more detached than ever from people, and situations that should devastate me or thrill me with excitement do neither. Thank you, Ollie. That thank you for everything that you have done for me and everyone who is just waking up. Anonymous. You know that last line about situ about situations that should devastate you or thrill you do neither. Okay. I don't know why you would think they should either devastate you or thrill you. What it tells me is you don't know yourself well enough. Because if you think something should have upset you or thrilled you and it doesn't, then that's just something you're not into or you don't care enough about it to let it upset you or to let it thrill you. So you still, I think you're still keeping this image of what you should be what should make you happy, what should excite you, what should upset you. You gotta throw all that out. You're a clean slate here. You are a clean slate. So if you like something, continue it. Once it becomes boring, move on. Okay? That doesn't mean just because you like something at first, you're not gonna become, grow tired or bored of it. Okay? Or something in the past that had made you angry and then something out, same thing happened, it doesn't. That's more, I think, of a reflection on, on the inconsistency of how you feel about yourself, of knowing yourself. Um, that, that's where I see, that, that's really what I see, is like you're in this discovery to find yourself. And that's what no contact is. No contact ultimately is a search for yourself. And... That's why the narcissist fights you so much. That's why he sets you up to Hoover to punish you because they never want you to find yourself. They don't want you to find that person because if you find your true self, if you know who you really are, your true self, then the narcissist can't even, can't even make a dent on you. You don't even give them a second look and they know that. They know that. That's why no contact is, is important. Because, yeah, and I've been saying it gives you clarity and it lets you th see things for how they are. And when you do that, because the goal of no contact is ultimately to figure out who the hell we are. What makes us happy. What you want. What your desires are. And once you know that, Narcissists can't touch you anymore. That's why they prevent us from trying to find out our true self. 
And I don't know if you've done this or not in re in regards to your mother and her suicide. Suicide. Um, you're a grown woman. Um, I don't know if you've reached out to your mom's side of the family and tried to regain a relationship with them. But if you haven't, you should. And I guarantee you those blocks that you're feeling in regards to your childhood, your relationship, your mother, other than the day she died, when you talk to them, you'll start remembering, start triggering, and you'll start jogging some memories and you'll get some more answers. And I think you being adopted, like Megan, that makes it even harder to find who your true self is. Because, you know, the concept of adoption is wonderful. It is a wonderful, wonderful thing to do for the right reasons. It is. But as the child, if you're a child, and I'm not adopted, I wish I was, believe me. But if you are adopted, I would imagine that you would have this sense of, like, I'm with this family, especially in a family like you grew up in and Megan grew up in, where you don't really know where you came from. You're like this question mark. So right from the get-go, you're already set on this giant question mark of who you are. And then you're always questioning, well, because I'm adopted and I don't know, and I know it doesn't matter. I think we become who we are based on environment. Not who, not who bores us, not who, not who we're born of. But that's an issue I can see a lot of adopted children having and into their adulthood. Because they never got the foundation, at least I know what my DNA consists of, what my blood is, what, where, where, it's, where, where the basis of it is. And a lot of times adopted children don't have that. And now when you're adopted by narcissists with that, you're beginning from that question mark. You'll never find your true self because the narcissist won't let you. So thank you so much for your contribution. Thank you for your story. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody who's watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, a narcissist you'd like to expose, or you'd like to set up a private Skype chat or have a private video made, you know what to do with the PayPal and the email link in the description box. I'll have the video right back to you. This is Ali Matthews. Thanks for watching. See you all again soon.